If we try to model the universe as we know it, as we try to build a mathematical model that reflects what we know, we quickly discover there are thousands of parameters and ratios that if you adjust them even a little bit, life is impossible. We quickly discover that the Earth was a little closer, a little further from the sun. It's either too warm or too cold. If it turns at a little different speed, if the masses are a little different, it would hold too much or too little atmosphere. As you start trying to model this, you quickly discover that all the parameters involve an incredibly delicate balance. And so they call this the anthropic principle, meaning it's as if everything we know was skillfully designed or balanced for man. The Earth is at a very specific distance from the sun. And they have calculated that if we were only 5% closer, the water would boil off from the oceans. If we were just 1% further away, then the oceans would freeze. And that gives you just some idea of what sort of a knife edge we are on. The surface gravity of the Earth is exactly where it needs to be. More, you have too much atmospheric pressure, less you don't have an atmosphere. Uh, the thickness of the crust is critical, the rotation period of the Earth, the gravitational interaction between the moon, strangely enough, has to be, is all these contribute to what makes life possible. And so they call that the anthropic principle, which collectively is an overwhelming argument for a designer. Scientists don't like to acknowledge that because a designer implies accountability. Our sun is immense, and its energy output enormous. The core of the sun is a scorching 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Though the sun is 93 million miles from Earth, sunlight is our main source of energy. Energy leaves the sun at the ferocious rate of 5 million tons of matter per second. This goes on day and night, year after year. There are many examples of God's power in nature. The whole universe came about by His Word. Psalm 33, 9 says that God spoke and it was finished. He commanded and it stood fast. As one good example, consider our nearest star, the sun. The sun gives off more energy in one second than mankind has produced since Adam and Eve. The sun actually provides its energy by nuclear fusion, converting hydrogen into helium on a grand scale. And uh, this is true of all the stars. In our own Milky Way galaxy, we estimate 100 billion stars. And beyond that, in deep space, we see 100 billion more galaxies. One cannot begin to grasp the kind of energy and power that we're talking about, all created by God's Word. The sun heats the earth and it drives all of the weather systems on the earth. Tornadoes, hurricanes, thunderstorms, just plain rain clouds, winds, all of that is driven by the energy coming from the sun. And the energy that we have on earth is only one billionth of the amount of energy that's coming from the sun. To gain perspective, with the aid of computer animation, let's now travel with the Earth to the Sun at 100 times the speed of light. From this view, we begin to appreciate the magnitude of our home star. Over one million Earths would fit inside the Sun. Yet our Sun is an average-sized star. Many stars in our own galaxy dwarf it. Arcturus is the fourth brightest star in the night sky. Though 200 trillion miles away, this orange giant is visible to the naked eye. By moving our sun next to Arcturus, we can grasp its immensity. Arcturus is 100 times brighter with a radius 20 times greater than the sun's. Yet even Arcturus appears small when compared with the supergiant Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse has a radius 600 times that of our sun. 
A reddish star, it shines a remarkable 60,000 times brighter than the sun. However, even Betelgeuse is not the largest star in our galaxy. Several red supergiants in the Milky Way are even larger. Some with a radius 1,500 times that of our sun. Well, one of the things in creation that I think really exhibits God's power is the power released in stars, uh, the sun. It releases more energy in, in one second than a billion major cities on the earth, if there were a billion, would produce in a year. And that's just released in one second. You can imagine that. And of course, there are stars that are even more powerful than the sun. And just imagine all that power, all those stars, billions of stars in our own galaxy, billions of stars in other galaxies. And yet the Bible describes the creation of all that energy, all that power with the single phrase, he made the stars also. When we consider that these ratios present only a sliver of our Creator's power, certainly we can agree with the psalmist when he exhorts, let all the earth fear the Lord. Of course, the stars reveal more than raw power. Without the light of the sun, all life on earth would soon perish. The sun's life-giving energy provides a constant reminder of our Creator's steadfast love the God who shines his gift of light on all. The visible universe contains more than 100 billion galaxies. Each of these galaxies has a diameter millions of trillions of miles wide, and each contains hundreds of billions of stars. Though incomprehensible, it is now estimated that the universe holds over a billion trillion stars. Long before the introduction of the telescope, Scripture declared that man would be unable to determine the exact number because there are so many. Of course, the Creator knows the exact number, and Psalm 147 declares that He even calls each star by name. The power to create each of these stars, the wisdom to maintain their stellar courses, and the incredible beauty displayed throughout the universe combine to affirm the Creator's majesty and care. God has made the universe so vast. All man can do is just marvel at this universe, the vastness of it. And I say, God, you are so, you are so great. And I think of what David said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have made, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that you should visit him? Well, it's estimated that there are over 100 billion stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, it's estimated that there are over a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. Which the Bible tells us that as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways above our ways and His thoughts above our thoughts. So chew on that for a little bit. Think about how big the universe is compared to the earth, which is just uh, the head of a pin by comparison. Just how big is God's universe? Traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, we could circle the earth seven times in one second. However, to travel across the known universe at the speed of light would take 28 billion years or more. Today, most astronomers acknowledge that the universe appears to be expanding. This also agrees with the Bible, which says God stretches out the heavens like a curtain. There are some examples in the Bible of scientific foresight. One example that comes to mind in particular is in Isaiah 40, 22, which talks about God stretching out the heavens as a tent or as a curtain. And you might say, well, that, you know, that is written in a poetic way, so we gotta be careful. And yet there are at least 10 other places in the Bible where it talks about this, this stretching out of the heavens. And that's something that uh, was only discovered in the uh, 20th century when we found that indeed all the galaxies appear to be, or virtually all of them, appear to be moving away from each other as if the entire universe is being, lo and behold, stretched out and expanded, just like the Bible says. And that's obviously not something that, that people could have observed in ancient times. That's something that had to have been revealed to them from above. 
unimaginably large, containing spectacular galaxies and stunning nebulae. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God.